So first of all, I'll give you the introduction of the chapter, what hydraulic turbines does and how can they be used for the benefit of human beings. So hydraulic turbines are nothing but their machines which convert the hydraulic energy into the electrical energy. So the hydraulic energy is not directly converted to the, into the electrical energy. First, the hydraulic energy has to be converted to mechanical energy and then the mechanical energy is indirectly converted to electrical. So we'll see the whole setup, how, it, how the energy exchange happens. We'll see how the energy that is hydraulic energy is converted to mechanical and mechanical is converted to electrical. So the next topic is the setup of the hydraulic power plant, how a hydraulic power plant works. Now as you can see in the diagram, I've drawn the layout of a hydroelectric power plant. So first of all, you need a dam to store the water, that is the rainwater. And then the water goes through a penstock. Uh, I have not named this. So pen, pen, uh, penstock is the pipe which uh, delivers water at the uh, turbine end from the dam. So penstock is just a pipe which carries water from the dam to the uh, turbine. Next is you can see a reservoir. A reservoir is a very important part of the hydroelectric power plant. So what a reservoir does is it stores water whenever uh, suppose in case the load on the turbine increases. So what it does is it supplies excess quantity of water so the turbine can fulfill its requirement. Suppose in some cases the load decreases the quantity of water has to be reduced so the uh, what reservoir does it, it takes the amount of water and it maintains uh, the power that a uh, turbine wants to generate. So reservoir just helps in maintaining the fluctuations that is happening with the turbine load. So that's very important part reservoir, you call it surge tank also sometimes. Then you can see, you see a wall, a wall which is used to uh, close and open just to restrict the flow of water. If you don't want the 
uh, water to flow through the pen straw you just close the valve the water will not flow next is you can see the in the turbine part of the setup there is a casing which contains everything inside the runner the veins veins are the bucket like uh, things which on which the water comes and strikes they help to rotate and runner is the wheel on which the buckets are mounted so, in, so the water comes through a nozzle and it strikes the veins with very high velocity a nozzle is provided only for the purpose of so that all the energy that is the kinetic energy all the potential energy of the water is converted to kinetic energy so that's the function of nozzle Also, as you can see, there are two namings I have done, the gross head and the net available head. Gross head is the total difference between the level of water at the topmost point and the bottommost point. The topmost point is the level of water in the dam and the bottommost point is the tail race, where the water just strikes the bucket and it falls down and goes into the tail race. So, there is a difference between the level of water and that is called gross head. Now, the gross head is not the head that is available for power generation. We, we all know that there are losses in turbines, uh, that there are losses in pipes. So when the water flows through the penstock, there are different types of losses. We've already seen that, the friction loss and there are the minor losses also. So these losses, they what they do is they reduce the net available head. So as you can see in the naming, I have shown the net available head as uh, a little bit reduced in the gross head. So there are head losses, so the available head becomes a little less than the cross head. So that was all about the layout and the introduction part of the turbines. So now we'll move on to the next topic. So that's the end of this topic. Thank you.